Today, I'm gonna to be walking you guys through my Health Hub Notion template. By one single page and a few databases, we can literally create a complete health hub for ourselves where we can track our exercises, we can track our diet, we can track our body measurements, and we can even track our exercise programs, for example, for the gym. Using this system in the past six months, I have lost upwards of 10 kilos and gained probably like five to six kilos of muscle alone. This Notion template also should prove to you how powerful it is when you actually build awareness around the things that you usually do. For example, the diet and what you eat, as well as the exercises and how much weight, for example, you lift at the gym. So enough talk, let's get right in. So welcome to the Health Hub. There is the section to open and see the programs that you're currently actually doing. You can see the exercises that you're actually doing from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. My exercises are optimized for going to the gym. This is my program. For example, I'm doing a upper lower split and you can see what days I'm doing what exercises, how many sets, how many reps, my total work done, and even some YouTube links attached to them. So if I forget how to do an exercise, I can always look at that and learn. Then you also can see your meal plan, actually all the stuff that you eat in a specific day, the total calories, the total proteins. And then finally, the last database is basically my muscle groups. I have it categorized into upper body, lower body, and basically full bodies. And here you can see my measurements when I took them and the change that I actually had within those measurements. Anyway, so let's get started from the first database and go through it one by one so you understand how you can fill it up yourself and what you need to do. So step number one is to figure out our program. And this is what program am I actually running for going to the gym. So far, I started using this health hub system myself since last November. And in that time, as you see, I had three programs. Two of them were eight weeks long. One of them was 12 weeks long. So here is just the name of the program that you like to put. Nothing special. For me, for example, for the first eight week body part split program, I paid for Jeff Nippert's program online and using his explanation as to how I should set up a program and so on and so forth, I then created a new entry here. This database's job is to just track what we are going to do in our program, not the exercises and not everything else. It just tells you what program you're running right now, tells you when it is going to happen using the period date here, and it's going to tell you what was your starting weight and your end weight and the change that you had. The last property I also have is the comments. And here I actually write a bit about the program after I finished the program as to figure out if that program was good or not and whether I want to run it again in the future. That's it. This one was super simple. Let's move on to the exercises, which is the main most important database that we actually care about. All right. So this database is actually super, super interesting. And the way I've set it up, it's actually the best database, in fact, that I've ever made in Notion. And I'll explain why. There is three different views to this database. There's the active exercises, which actually shows you the program you're running, the grouping and the way you look at these changes based on the program that you're running from step number one. So for example, right now I'm running an upper lower split four days a week. I go to the gym. That means I have lower on Mondays, upper on Tuesdays, lower on Fridays and upper on Saturdays. And that's just the way I've set it up around my schedule that just fits quite nicely. That means to be able to create a program like this, I first need to have a list of of all the exercises that I have. And then from that list of exercises, just choose a few that are active that I'm actually going to do at the gym and actually put them in the specific days that I want to group my database by. So let's just show you what that means. If I go to the next view, all exercises, you can see a list of exercises that are sorted based on the muscle group. So you can see things related to my triceps, things related to shoulders, quads, hams, glutes, chest, and so on and so forth. And this full list of exercises that you see here, I just manually put them in once and you can add more as you wish. You can always click new, you can add the type of the exercise it is and so on and so forth. But simply put, for you, I've already given you this list of exercises, especially if you go to the gym, you don't need to do anything else here. So all you need to do now is based on the program that you're going to run for your body type is to come into this database and click the checkbox, 
which is basically the active checkbox again for all the exercises that you actually want to do and you care about. So for example, you want to do tricep extensions or assisted dips for your triceps. All you have to do is to come here and click on the checkboxes and they will be automatically then filtered to show in your active exercises section. Now, on top of that, we said, hey, you probably don't want to do two full on tricep exercises in the same session. So what you can do is then you can actually say what are the active days for that specific exercise. So all I need to do then is to, after I've set it to active, come to the active days property and choose what day of the week I want to run this on. This obviously depends on the program that you're running. But for me, for example, this is going to be Saturday in my upper days, whereas my assisted dips is on Tuesday in my upper days. On top of that, there's the property of type. This also explains just at a quick glance, what is the type of the exercise? Is it a barbell exercise, dumbbell, machine? Is it a cardio, body weight? and so on and so forth. Next to that, you have the sets, reps, and RPE. Sets and reps just tells you how many sets you're going to do, how many reps in each set. And then the RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion, which basically just tells you if you're going to do that exercise, how hard should you go on it? This is a number between 1 and 10. And the closer you are to 10, the more you need to go to failure when you do that exercise. Let's not get into the details of how you should build muscle. But basically, what you want to do is with most of your exercises, you want to keep this RPE somewhere near 7, 8, 9, 10. So somewhere near failure. And that's where actually the range of hypertrophy actually is. That's where you build a lot of muscle. Finally, you have a related property called muscle group. And this relates to the different types of muscle groups that you have in your body. So as you can see, this long rope tricep extension relates to the muscle group of triceps. And where this database is actually coming from is from step number four where we actually define our muscle groups and our measurements and so on and so forth so what you can do is you can always change the muscle group if you want or even include the same exercise for example some exercises hit multiple muscle groups at a time in this property for you i've already done this so for most of these exercises that you see the muscle groups are correct but sometimes maybe you like to focus on doing the exercise slightly different so you can always change this muscle group as you wish. Finally, the demo property is a list of YouTube videos that I found online and some of them were from the paid program. So this property, unfortunately, I cannot share the actual links to you guys because this is what I paid for online, but I will still include the property there for you. So you can just do a Google search on how to do assisted dips and just put the YouTube link here. Then what you can do, you can take you to the gym and basically if you forget at any point what you need to do, just click it once and basically you can see what is that exercise. This database also has another view called body parts. And this is just a simpler way of looking at your exercises based on each body part. And I'm actually using the grouping feature in Notion. So as you can see, I'm grouping by the muscle group. I'm sorting it manually. And basically I've just hidden the exercises that don't have a muscle group in there. Now what I can see is I can come in here and see all the different exercises I have. So for example, dumbbell flat bench press. I can see that it's active. I can see the sets, reps, work, and so on and so forth. And at any point, I can just activate or disactivate these exercises. Now, just to show you how this looks when you activate and disactivate an exercise, let's just pick up an exercise, push up diamond. And as you can see, this is not currently active. But if I click on active and I set a day for, let's say I want to do it in my Tuesday upper days. If I look at my active exercises view in my Tuesdays, in my upper days, I will see the push up diamond here showing up. But if I now deactivate it, you saw that it just went away. So what is actually filtering is the active property, not just the date. So you can always add days to everything you want, but the active property is actually what is defining what is showing up in our active exercises view, because we're basically filtering by active is ticked. And if it's not, then it won't show here. Also in the active exercises, I'm also using the grouping feature in Notion, the new one that just literally released a few weeks ago, but I'm actually grouping it based on the active days so that I can see all the exercises that I have to do for Monday in my Monday group and so on and so forth. So now you can see for Monday, I have seven exercises to do. These are the exercises. These are the type of the machines or the type of the exercise it is. I can see my sets, reps and RPE. And then this is where it's super powerful is that I can take this on my phone to the gym. And when I do the exercise, I can just write the amount of weight 
that I actually did in that exercise for each of my sets. For example, my dumbbell flat bench press, I have to do three sets of six. So as you can see in set one, I did 64 kilos, set two, I did 72, set three, I did 76. And then we have a property called total work and basically it's just showing you the total amount of work done so you can see the number of sets times the reps for that specific weight in addition to the other two sets and what this shows is basically the total amount of work that you did in that exercise in that specific day now what is super cool here is that for building muscle we know we need to do progressive overload which means you just need to move more weight over time so in this property i can actually look at it at the gym did i do more reps or did i do more sets or did i do more weight just as an example if i now go to the gym next week and i do 80 kilos instead of 76 you can see the total work increase so that means i am improving in that specific exercise and if i'm not and if at any point i hit a plateau then i know that i have not done it correctly or maybe it's time for a deload or it's time to change that exercise that's just the way i have my feedback loop there finally there's another property called lsrpe which just stands for last set rpe and this just shows you did you reach the rpe that you set out to reach so for example if my rpe is set for 10 which means i need to go to failure did i actually go to failure or not clearly i did not i only reached almost to failure or if my rpe was set to eight but i went all the way to nine means that the weight might for example not be as high so i actually did more than i had to do this is just, again, another feedback loop of telling you how good you are doing in that specific exercise. And trust me, I'm just not doing it justice showing you the database on a computer. When you take this on your phone to the gym, it actually changes the whole thing. You do a set, you can immediately put your weight in and it immediately tells you if you're doing more work or not. Simple as that. And then you can also see the average of your total uh, work done here at the bottom. And you can see some days, for example, especially leg days, I do a lot more work. I move a lot more weight than I do, for example, in my upper body days. But that's it. Basically, the next time you have a new program, you come in here and maybe add new days. Maybe sometimes you in your program, you want to run three days, not five days or not four days. And then just pick the exercises and show them in your active view super simple step number three is actually figuring out our meal plan so you can't really do exercise and go into the gym if you're just not really controlling what you're eating you're probably not going to lose any weight you're probably not going to really actually stick to your plan properly you can also actually see this in my programming so in the first two programs that i ran i didn't care about my diet i just went to the gym i actually built a lot of muscle but there was no diet involved. That's why I only lost maybe three kilos and then a two kilos here. But in the program that I've been running since April, I actually started also implementing my diet plan properly. And you can see that I've already lost five kilos. That's only a month and a few days that I've already spent fixing my diet. And you can see I've lost a lot more weight than I did in the past two weeks. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of water weight or whatever, but it doesn't matter. My point is that diet fixes your weight so we care about that and that's why actually what we see in the plan here is days of monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday and sunday and in each of those days we have the specific meals that we're gonna have all the way from breakfast lunch snacks and my dinner for each of these recipes we're gonna have the calories calculated the protein amount that really matters especially if you're gonna build muscle and a property called the percentage of protein to the calories. This is something I've set up manually. It's, it's just basically the amount of protein divided by the amount of calories. And it tells you basically how good is this food that you're eating in the sense of the protein to calorie ratio. And for example, you can see the protein shake is really high in the protein to calorie ratio whereas for example an egg muffin or a nutella biscuit is not obviously a nutella biscuit doesn't have a lot of protein so it's probably not that good for me especially for the amount of calories that you're getting so actually you can see what foods are good and what foods are bad additionally you have to set up these recipes the way i've calculated these numbers is been all manually going and making those meals there is no better way to do it trust me i've tried my fitness pal i've tried so many other things it just doesn't work as long as you don't know what you're going to these labels that you scan are not accurate all these things actually affect your diet and how much weight you lose or not so what i've done is i have for example decided i want to make an egg muffin 
I've created a new recipe for it. And I went and actually added all the ingredients, the amounts that I put, and the calories, protein, carbs, and fats that each of those have. And then at the end, after you calculate each recipe, you can just copy that value. So for example, your calories and put it up in the calorie property or the amount of protein and put it in the protein property. You can also add it for carbs and fats. I don't want to do that. I don't really care about it. As long as I meet my calorie intake and as long as I meet my protein intake goals, I am happy because I know I'm going to be losing weight and I know that I'm going to be building muscle. But yeah, that's also how you actually create new recipes. So if you just have a look in my days, some days I also have actually tart dessert or Nutella biscuits or other stuff that I put into my day that I eat. But as long as I am within my calorie range of basically 2,100 to 2,400, 2,500, then I'm basically happy and I'm happy to eat those things that I actually put on my plan. So when you actually plan it out like this and you calculate the math, you can see that you can actually eat a lot more than you think. You don't have to have a strict diet of just chicken and broccoli all the time. Now, how do we set up these recipes? So if you go to the gallery tab, what you see here is basically recipes rated based on their level of goodness. What I call level of goodness is basically how good is that food for me or how much do I like it? For example, you can see stars number one, two, three, four, and five. So the things that have five stars are basically some of my favorite foods i like roast chicken for example or chicken wrap this chicken wrap we can see why it's so good it has 706 calories but almost 85 grams of protein that's a protein to calorie ratio of 12 which is really high it's almost as high as a protein shake which is literally just protein right i am going to add images to all of this and when you add images this whole gallery view is going to look a lot better i just didn't have the time to do that yet but just feel free. You can always open this. Let's say I want to add salmon. I can just add a cover, change the cover, and there you go. Then you can actually have the image showing up as well. Or what I'm going to do is to take images of the food that I'm actually going to eat and then upload the images into the cover section so that I actually see the images of what I'm going to eat. You might also want to see basically all the food that you have on your meal plan and pick which ones are active and not, just like our exercises database. And that's what you do in the table view, basically. You can just see all the food that exists. You can see all the uh, ones that are active right now you can see what type of food they are dinner lunch breakfast etc you can see the calories protein protein to calorie ratio and i think i've sorted this also based on the goodness scale because then i can see what foods i like a lot and what foods do i not like so much so yeah just like how you define your exercises and you picked the ones that were active and added active days for them you can do the same thing with your food you can come and say okay i want to have egg muffins on monday and tuesdays and basically you can just pick the specific number of days that you have for example i have a protein shake pretty much every day so that's why i have it on every single day here and that's how it shows up every single time in my actual active plan just to show you how this works i have sorted all of this based on the tag ascending that shows then i have my breakfast at the top lunch dinner snacks and so on and so forth and then my filter is basically by active being checked so if it's not active it won't show so that's it we have our program we have our exercises we have our meal plan and now let's talk about the muscle groups this is also super simple because all humans pretty much have the same muscle groups and these are just the main ones that i care about i just care about big muscle groups like my back i don't care really to distinguish all the muscles in my back all i care about is how good is my back how what is the measurement and so on and so forth so as you can see this is only one view i've grouped it based on upper body legs and full body these are all the muscle groups in my upper body these are all the muscle groups in my legs and full body i just use it for a placeholder for anything that is basically affecting all of my body such as for example a hit workout or cardio now then you can see the types here in fact you don't even really need to show this anymore you can just hide it because the group already tells you what type of a body part it is then you can put ratings and this is also i like it because you can rate how good are those muscle groups in your body for example i've got no abs so that's why it's a lol anyway and um, my chest i'm pretty happy about so we can make this like a four star and then this is all sorted based on which muscle groups have the highest rating and that way you just basically can figure out what muscle groups you need to work on more to actually build them up and based on that 
include them in your program and exercises. Also what I do, I have two properties of my measurements in centimeters and the specific days. So for example, you can see this is in December, 2021, and this is, that's when I ran my 12 week program. And in that 12 week program, you can see that some areas I lost some measurements such as my abs, which means I lost belly fat and some areas I gained a lot of muscle. So for example, my chest grew by like 2.5 centimeters, which is actually pretty good. Or my triceps, for example, grew a lot by 5.5 centimeters, which means the exercises that I did in that specific program helped me grow a lot. Um, also, there's a property that just calculates the change so you can see your actual progress here. For example, I know in my programming, I didn't do any sort of glute exercises. That's why my glutes are actually the same size, but I did a lot of quads and that's why my quads grew the most. Nine centimeters in 12 weeks is actually pretty good in my opinion, which means I have built a lot of muscle there, even if I didn't lose weight, which means I'm becoming healthier. So all these different formulas and all these different measurements that you do help you get feedback for your body and how you're actually progressing at the gym or in your meal plan and so on and so forth. So that's it basically. You don't have a lot to do. All you need to do is to figure out what you want to eat, figure out what you want to do at the gym or what exercises you want to do and basically just then put them in once and then when after you put them in once, which maybe takes 30 minutes, you only use this database once every day you go to the gym or once every day when you want to check what you've eaten all day. But yeah, also something else that I do on my phone is that I actually have it as a widget on my home screen so I can actually at any point jump to this gym plus health hub that I have and go to the exercises and change them on the fly especially when I am at the gym which means I save a ton of time and it actually works pretty well for me I have been getting results with it I've lost almost 10 kilos of weight in almost like four or five months and I've gained a lot of muscle mass so I strongly recommend that you give this a go for yourself at least duplicate the database play around with it and see if you like it if you don't like it absolutely fine but if you do then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this video so that i can also continue making videos like this for you guys because i really think notion is actually great and it gives you a lot of opportunities to build systems that work for you again that's the important part it needs to work for you and if it doesn't work for you then don't do it but you can learn from this video still and you can learn how to set up something similar maybe more simple or maybe more complex for yourself that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video then i'll catch you guys in the next one peace